Well, hello, everyone. One of the most dramatic and tragic things I've ever seen involving a bridge happened this morning in Baltimore with the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse due to an impact from a cargo ship. You can see here it was it was very, very quick. I mean, a matter of seconds once the cargo ship impacted the bridge pier. As of this recording on March 26, there are two people that have been rescued and seven that are still missing. So these include people that were driving on the, on the deck of the bridge before it collapsed. And it's also been reported that there were some construction workers on the bridge as well that are missing. So I wanna go through some details and cover some key things that I've noticed that contributed to this disaster. So this is the I-695 toll bridge the, uh, as it was named Francis Scott Key Bridge, opened in 1977. It's a steel arch continuous truss bridge. The bridge spans the Patapsco River and outer Baltimore Harbor. The main span is 1,200 feet long, which makes it the third longest span of any continuous truss bridge in the world. This bridge collapsed at 1.28 a.m. Eastern Time on March 26, 2024, as a result of this cargo ship impact. The ship is named Dolly, and it's a Singapore flagged cargo ship. And it, impact appears to be the result of, at least directly, the ship losing power a few minutes before impact. So you can see initially the ship's moving from left to right in frame and the lights go out. Now I'm gonna speed this up six times normal. The ship didn't suddenly increase speed. I've just sped it up here for conciseness of viewing. And you can see it's getting closer and closer to one of the piers on the main span of the bridge. It looks like there's three columns that go up supporting the bridge deck. It's just getting closer and closer and also seems to be getting turned around in the current. You can also see that at some point emergency power came back on, although it must not have been sufficient to provide maneuverability to the cargo ship. And then we have impact. I mean, this bridge comes down nearly instantaneously. It's really shocking footage. Now, I want to show you this here. <clears throat> You've got these transmission line poles. There's a dolphin and fender system to protect from ice and primarily ship impacts. And there appears to be some small dolphins in front of the main span of the bridge, but only in front of the piers on the main span. Obviously, that's not going to protect from a ship impacting the piers unless the ship heads directly for that dolphin. Typically, you would expect a more extensive dolphin and fender system, as you can see in this picture here. This was constructed using driven sheet pile and then filled in with concrete. And you can see it goes clear around the perimeter of the bridge pier. So you can see the aftermath of all these sections of the bridge falling into the river. So this is what happens when there's a failure of a non-redundant bridge structure. In this case, it appears that the cargo ship impacted one of the columns, one of the three columns supporting the bridge deck at that pier location, and that was all it took to bring the whole bridge down. So you would think that for important structures and structures that involve non-redundant design and construction that there would be more protection uh, afforded to the structure by a more elaborate dolphin and fender system. So going back to what I mentioned earlier, it appears that the transmission line poles had more protection from impact than the bridge pier themselves had. Now compare how quickly that Francis Scott Key Bridge came down to a controlled demolition. This is a Rocheport Bridge. I worked on this. This is I-70 over the Missouri River. They built a new bridge and then demoed the old bridge.
So I have a lot of questions about this whole incident. You know, first of all, why was the cargo ship operating so closely to the bridge, even before it lost power? I don't understand why it was in its location. Maybe it's a common thing. I just, it seems crazy to me that such a large ship could be that close to a bridge like this. Also, as I mentioned, why wasn't there a more extensive dolphin and fender system protecting these bridge piers? You know, the NTSB and the Coast Guard is gonna certainly investigate this. And uh, typically NTSB investigations, which will no doubt be the lead agency here, typically takes 12 to 24 months to compile their reports. So in this case, the cost seems pretty clear cut. It's on, it's on video. However, what are the circumstances that, that caused this? I mean, why was it operating the way it was? Why did the, the power go out? It appears that emergency power came on, but it wasn't sufficient to provide maneuverability to the cargo ship. I think it takes quite some time to restart all the systems on a cargo ship like this. So hopefully there'll be more survivors uh, rescued following this collapse. It's uh, gonna have huge impacts to the local community there with the loss of this bridge. I mean, you could just imagine what ha you know, you take what happened with the Washington Bridge in Rhode Island, it's sudden closure. This is gonna have far more impacts. And a bridge like this can easily take three years to construct. So it's, it's a quite a, a damaging, impactful situation. So I wanna send a shout out to the channel members. I typically have the channel members preview videos at least a day ahead of time before I release them more broadly except in breaking news situations, I'll tend to push those out right away. But the channel members really support my ability to produce videos on a weekly basis. I also wanna send a shout out to those providing super thanks. That's another way to support the channel. In addition to people liking, subscribing, and leaving comments to these videos. Also, I still have the free digital download of the biggest civil engineering disasters for the past 100 years. You can check out the link in the description. Thanks very much, everyone.